but then we have to teach them and then we have to teach them but we also need to teach them and pretty soon we had two sessions worth we have to teach them so it's going to be fun for the next two days and really uh, appreciate debbie and brian presenting and they're uh, quite the experts on all of this so get ready for some good information so debbie you starting sure i can go ahead and start <clears throat> I just wanted to let you know that I do have internet connection issues, especially since my backyard is a pond today after last night's rain. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my video since I will be getting online to share um, the website and uh, like I said, my husband is on another meeting downstairs. So. Just give me a second here. I'm trying to get the uh, chat window back open. Okay, can you guys see Qualtrics? Yep, maybe we're seeing it up there um, now. Okay, somebody give me a verbal because I can't get the participant list back up or the chat window back up. So. Just shout at me if somebody starts to ask a question, okay? So um, I'm gonna to talk to you a lot about um, how we can communicate with our, our, our survey respondents through Qualtrics. Um, this is so uh, you can, um, for example, I'm gonna show you how to use your messages library. I'm going to show you how to create a contact list um, so that you can distribute your survey. Uh, to your participants. And then also I'm going to show you how you can um, use Qualtrics to share um, results uh, with those respondents. If you, for example, want them to see how they responded to your survey, I'm going to show you a couple different ways we can um, share those results with the participants as they are filling out the survey. So I'm going to start off by creating a survey so that we can show you all these features. So I am in um, Qualtrics, and I'm just going to click up here where it says create a new project. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a survey. So I'm clicking over here on the left where it says survey. And then I'm going to copy something from the library. I'm going to copy from the OSU Extension Library. And if you do not have this option to copy from the OSU Extension Library, just shoot me an email, lewis.205, um, and I will get you um, added to this OSU Extension user group in Qualtrics. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up a test um, survey. Now I'm going to come over here. So I just picked the survey that I wanted to um, copy from the library. And I'm going to click over here on Get Started. You can also create a survey from scratch, but since that wasn't the focus of today's session, um, it was more talking about how we communicate through Qualtrics. I'm going to like refrain from um, making all these changes and stuff to the survey that I might normally do once I'm copying something out of the library. So to start off with, now that I have my survey created, I'm going to uh, look up here under contacts because I want to um, create a contact list to send to this, this survey to uh, people. Um, so let's say I already have a list of, um, for example, uh, this is the quality assurance survey. So I have a list of my 4-H members in my county um, and I want to be able to send them this survey and ask them to register for the quality assurance session. So if I click on contacts up here, I'm going to click up here where it says create contact list. And then the first thing I'm going to do is just give it a name.
And then usually the first thing I do, um, you can import directly from a file. You can, uh, you have several options here, or you can add manually, or you can import from a survey. Um, I usually import from a file, and the first thing that I like to do is download the example document. This keeps my columns in the correct order, and it gives me column headers, so I know what I'm doing when I'm importing my survey. So I'm just going to click here where it says example document uh, down here in the lower right hand corner of my screen. And then I'm going to go ahead and just open this up. Um, has it switched to Excel? Can somebody give me a verbal yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, and then I'm going to, I already have a file created over here. You can see the example document gives you John Doe as your example. Um, it also has a few other columns in here. So for example, external data reference, I never use this column, I, I skip it, but it has some other options over here. So embedded data A and embedded data B. If you have some embedded data that you want to import with this um, file, then you can insert that information here. So for example, um, I have my 4-H club name. So when you're creating uh, field labels for these other columns, um, make sure you don't um, put any spaces in the field label. And then I'm also going to have just throw in there a phone number because it's data that I have um, that I want to keep with the, each of the participants. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of John Doe here because he's not one of my 4-H members. And then I already have my information in another file. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it from one file to the other. Now, if you're watching this video later or if you're wondering right now, I do have some fake names and email addresses in this folder, so don't try to contact these people. Um, they don't exist. So all I did was uh, do a copy and paste from my original file to this one. And you can see that this is not exactly lining up because I have this external data reference and my club names are not lining up with my club name header. So all I'm gonna do is insert a column here. And I'm gonna shift everything over to the right. So now I have that external data reference um, is now a blank column and that's fine. Um, the only required fields are the first name, last name, and primary email address. Um, these other ones out here, um, again, these are embedded data, uh, and you can create as many. I haven't encountered a limit, um, but you can create uh, several other embedded, embedded data fields over here if you would like to. And you can use those. Um, Brian's going to show you tomorrow how to use, uh, like, piped text. Et cetera, in a survey. Uh, so you can use, if you have an embedded data field in your uh, contact list, you can use that in your survey. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, I need to save this as a uh, CSV file. And you can see that since I've downloaded that demo file uh, or the, the example file, it's already set up as a CSV. But if, you, if it's not, like if you're working directly from Excel and you didn't take that step to download the example file, just make sure you select the, the, the file type as CSV. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. And you're always going to get these messages. Are you sure you want to save it in this for, file format? Just say yes. And then I'm going to switch back over to Qualtrics. And you can see my window is still open here um, where I was looking for my contact list. So I'm going to click on the Browse button here. And then I'm going to go find it. OK. So you can see. Um, that uh, the, they have imp 
supported, okay? So I have my first contact person, next contact, third contact. So they're in column, uh, like each person is in their own column in this particular format. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on add contacts. And you can see that it's gonna process this. And there I have my, my contact list. And it has 35 members in it. Now, if you wanna look at who's on this list, you can do that just by clicking on the name. And then the only problem that, one of the things that I don't like about Qualtrics and their contact list uh, format, like user interface here, is that you can only see their first name, last name, email address. If I wanna see what um, 4-H club that Candace belongs to, I have to click on her name. And then I can come over here on the side and I can view what they have. So 4-H club name is Fresh Start and there's their phone number. If I want to uh, change that information, say that she um, selected the wrong 4-H club or she uh, changed 4-H clubs, I can click on this little edit here. And then I can also um, edit any of this information. So if I wanted to, I would just leave 4-H club name here, but I might change it from Fresh Start to something else. This is also where um, eventually you can see their um, interaction uh, and their history of um, viewing the survey. Uh, so or interacting with the survey, like when they responded, when they got an invitation, when they got a reminder, just by clicking on the view history. So if you have a question about somebody in particular, you can go back in and look at that, okay? You can tell, tell here that I have a current job one. That's just the, the last one that I just tried to do. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you after we created the survey, and now I showed you how to do a contact list, I wanted to show you how to um, create an invitation. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna use my library to store my, um, any of my emails that I wanna use for this survey. So I'm gonna create an invitation email and I'm also gonna create um, some uh, reminder emails. So what I usually do, um, just click on library up here. And then you can see you have several different options here. You can look at the survey library and you can see I'm in my own library right now. I'm not looking at any of the other libraries that are created here. Um, if I clicked on this drop down, I could select a different library to look at. So we have a survey library, we have a graphics library, we have a files library. So if I wanna send a file with uh, attached to an email invitation, you can do that um, and you can store it here. Um, and then I also have a messages library. So this is what I wanna show you today is how we communicate with people. So I'm gonna to go to my messages library. And I have a lot of surveys in my <laughs> account. Uh, so um, I just keep switching to my demo file over here because I folder, because I have some um, already prepared uh, demos. So if we want to create an email invitation, um, you can sort, if you get a lot, start to get a lot of um, communications like email um, invitations or email reminders in here, you can also filter your list to view for example, only invite emails. So you can see I have one invitation um, email and then I can also sort by reminder emails. So since I only have three in this folder, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this first one. So when you're creating a new message, um, you just click up here and um, on the new message button and it's gonna open up um, something that looks like an email for you. Uh, so some of the things that you're gonna wanna put into your email message. Um, first of all, you can name it. Uh, so that you can find it later. Uh, some of the components. Um, if you want to um, personalize this email, which is usually a really good idea, you could um, start off with a salutation and then uh, something that Brian is gonna get into in more detail is piped text. But if I want to have um, hello first name, um, 
so that it's personalized, I would just click on this little A with the curly brackets around it. And then I'm going to come down here to this panels field. In Qualtrics, our contacts used to be called panels. Uh, so I'm just going to click on recipient first name. And then that's going to embed a code in there and it will um, include the first name when I send this invitation then. Some of the components you're going to want to include in an invitation, I usually like to include um, the purpose. So why is this email invitation getting sent? Um, and what, what is that purpose of that? And then also I like to include, um, uh, you need to include, of course, the link to the survey. I sometimes include it both ways. So this one will display a very long URL. Um, actually, this one will display uh, just text that says take the survey. You can see here what that text looks like. Um, and this one here where it says, um, where you can copy and paste the URL below, um, this is going to be the very long URL that Qualtrics automatically generates. The other component you're going to have to have is a um, opt-out link. Um, so those are some of the major components. What I also like to do is include a respond by date. Um, and that, that tells the person how long they have to respond to my survey. Um, and again, uh, in the, the email invitation, I usually like to uh, thank them for um, their responses. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this message and just show you what that looks like in um, my other sample over here. So I just clicked on the title there, and I'm going to go ahead and click on edit here. The other thing you should make sure you do is to include a branded signature block in your um, email invitation. Um, that way the person that is getting your invitation knows that it's coming from a legitimate source. Um, you can see this one has uh, a purpose. So this was for the A&R FCS program reviews that we did last um, in December. Um, you can include links to uh, documentation. To do that, all you do is would highlight the word and then click on this little button up here that has the link, just like you would in other, uh, you know, in Word or something like that. And you can copy and paste um, from a Word document into this format. Um, and if you would prefer like creating your survey invitation in Microsoft Word, you can do that as well. But you can see the different types of elements that you can include here. So if you want to include a URL to a link to a web page or something like that that gives a, a good description of, of what it is, the, what the project is that you're working on, um, you can do that. Um, you can see that there is the call to action uh, kind of uh, information about why we're doing this and uh, what's the importance of it. Then you can see here, this is the, um, the short one, and this one happens to say, click here to access the survey. And the way this one is inserted, this link is inserted. Um, I'll show you here. It's up here. You um, click on uh, the pipes text again and do survey links. And then you can uh, insert um, the survey link here. And this one will say, take the survey in text. Um, this is the longer one. As I said earlier, you do the same steps, except you're going to select a different, a different one this time. So I'm going to click on the piped text. I'm clicking over here on survey links and then the survey URL. And then that's going to um, include that survey URL, the longer version of the URL. Um, we usually like to include both uh, so that we don't get, um, it, it lessens the, the chance that it will end up in someone's spam folder um, in their email. Um, so uh, sometimes, um, the, depending on the security settings of the people that are going to respond to your survey, um, the security settings of their email program, um, it might uh, tend to end up in the trash. So I'm going to show you another trick um, for the from that we can try to avoid that. 
You can see here there's a deadline. Please don't, um, please respond by December 18th. I also like to include um, forwarding, don't forward this message. Everyone is going to get their own unique URL because Qualtrics is going to track that for us. Also, I use the, um, the custom email address that we can use um, in our iteration of Qualtrics here at Ohio State. So I also include a message here that says, please don't email this uh, particular email address as it was created specifically um, to distribute this survey. Uh, because what's going to happen if they just um, respond, try to type in that email address, it's going to go into a black hole. Nobody will ever get that message. Um, but I can show you how I control for that. Um, here you can see that if you have any questions about the survey, we gave another contact um, uh, here in the, the last paragraph. And then, of course, the signature block. And this is the kind that doesn't have the logo in it, but you can include the logo version as well. And then way down here at the bottom, you'll see that I have included the opt-out link. Uh, so it's in there. Uh, according to Qualtrics, uh, you can still click on it. But I put it at the very bottom under the signature block um, because people have less of a tendency to venture down below the signature block and look for an opt-out link. Um, for some of these things, like for example, if you were sending out an email invitation uh, to your 4-H members and they need, they're taking a livestock project and they need to sign up for a quality assurance session, then you don't want them to just click on an opt-out link because that means they're never going to get that email again, um, an email from you for the survey. Any questions so far? No, right. <clears throat> pardon me, Debbie, no questions okay. in the chat box. All right, and let me know if I'm going too fast. Just T, unmute yourself and say, hey, Debbie, slow down. <laughs> hey, Debbie, it's um, fine. <laughs> Okay. Good. <laughs> um, Debbie, I and have then, um, Debbie. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and my question has to do about the contact list. We were specifically talking about 4-H members. Um, it's not uncommon. Uh, we have one particular family. They have 11 kids, and they share one email address. Is that link going to be sent to only one time, and then they're only going to be able to access that survey one time? So each of the 11 kids won't be able to register, only the first one that happens to click on that link. How does that work when you've got multiple people sharing that email address? Okay, so I didn't, in the, the contact list that I just imported did not have any duplicates in it, but if it did, on that step where I was importing, if, if, it, if Qualtrics found some duplicates in it, it would just um, duplicate email addresses it would tell me that there's duplicate email addresses and do I want to consolidate? Um, I usually say no to that because um, in my file, I would have, um, for example, you know, Bob and Sally and Nancy all belong to the same family. They're using a family email address, but they, then they would each get their own um, uh, email because you have a different first name for each of them. As long as you don't click on that button that says consolidate duplicates, you don't want to consolidate duplicates if you indeed want each of them to get their own email. And then I'll make sure to show you where you control that um, in your survey itself. Um, there's a feature under survey options called ballot box. Just make sure that's, um, that you allow, <laughs> it's, it's unchecked. Because basically what Ballot Box um, does is it, it tracks the email addresses um, of, of who's responding. And it will say, if you have that turned on, then it will only let one person respond from that email address. Okay? And then Fabulous. once you Thank download you. the data, yeah, once you download the data, then it will have that, um, you know, it will have their first name, last name, and email address associated with their response if that's how you want to download the data. You can avoid that too. You don't have to, you know. But in this, this example, we do definitely want to see, you know, who's responded how. All right. Um, when okay. I do reminder emails, go ahead. Yeah, I, Kay, did you yeah. have one more point? I, I just wanted to check back in with Kay. No, I just said thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, Debbie. Um, 
So I, I have uh, figured out the um, wizardry that is having two monitors and a Zoom <laughs> meeting going. So Teresa Johnson, I now see your question in the chat box. Um, so the advantage of sending an, uh, a personalized invitation as opposed to a uh, like one URL for everybody to respond to, um, we can personalize the, the email invitation. That's one of the advantages, which tends to increase our response rate. At least that's what research shows us. Um, the other thing is uh, we, in this case, in this example, we definitely want to match up the person um, and how they have responded. We want to be able to say, okay, Sally has signed up for this quality assurance session. Okay, and then we don't have to ask that question on the invitation or on the survey itself. Um, if we already have the information, um, we try not to ask the question on the survey. That's one less thing they have to fill out. Um, and then each person has their own individualized link. So it's generally to increase the response rate. Um, what I do with my email reminders I usually just include the original invitation um, at the bottom, and then I just pop up at the top of it. I say, you know, we haven't heard from you yet. You were sent a link to respond to the survey, blah, 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 uh, recently. Um, so the easiest way from what I have found to do is to just copy my um, original invitation, and then I will save it as a reminder. So for example, this, this first one up here, I'm going to stop clicking on the title because it keeps opening the file or opening the invitation. So over here on the right hand side, you'll see a cog. Click on that drop down next to the cog and say copy message. And then I want this to be in my library. I'm going to put it in my demo folder. Um, I'm going to make this instead of a message type. I'm going to make it a reminder email instead of an invitation email. So I just click on that drop down and I'm going to change the type to reminder emails. And that becomes important when you get into the survey um, because uh, it might um, um, sorry, I'm typing. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's important to um, make sure that it's a reminder email type because when you get in the survey, you can only send reminder type emails as reminders. I'll explain that better when I get to the survey. Um, but for right now, I have um, named this reminder number three, and then I'm going to click on copy. And you can see now I have another reminder here. Um, and again, if I want to edit one of these reminders, I just go in, I click on the title of the email invitation, and then there's this little edit button up here in the top. And then I can edit whatever I need to edit. Okay, so again, since I copied my invitation, this has got the original in email invitation. So I would just come up here before this first paragraph, I would put the text in for whatever my reminder is. And then I usually say the original in email invitation is below. Okay, so now that we have some email messages created, we have our contact list created. Uh, let's go back to the survey and I'll show you how to use those. Hey, Debbie. So I'm going to, yes, go ahead. So um, I think I have this right. So another um, advantage to using a contact list is that, um, if you already mentioned this, forgive me, but it, the re, uh, reminders will not be sent out to those people who have indeed responded. That is correct. It is a, it's another way, again, to communicate with your, with your respondents, and you're letting Qualtrics do the work for you. So thank you for bringing that up, because yes, T, that is another really good point of why we'd like to use Qualtrics to do this type of, to keep track of this communication for me, because it is the product itself, the software, is going to keep track of who's responded. And then when I click on this reminder, you'll see when I show you in the, the um, the, the survey for the distribution, you'll see um, that uh, you can send only, Qualtrics will only let you send it to um, non-respondents, a reminder to non-respondents. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here. I forgot to name my project. Make sure you name your project so you don't want a bunch of, of untitled projects because <laughs> that'll get confusing. 
Okay, so now I'm ready to distribute this survey. So I'm going to come up here to distributions. If you have um, a Qualtrics account, uh, make sure you're using the Qualtrics uh, account with Ohio State. So it's go.osu.edu forward slash Qualtrics. Um, because some people have mistakenly set up a free account on the regular version of Qualtrics, and yes, it's 30 minutes into this, and I'm just now reminding you of this. Um, so make sure you're using the Ohio, the Ohio State version of Qualtrics, and you can tell that because it'll say osu.az1 um, up here at the top. But if you do not have this distributions link, uh, shoot me an email because you'll need to upgrade your account. Um, as employees at Ohio State, we all have a student trial account when we start off. Um, that just needs to be upgraded so you can access all of the standard features available to you uh, in Qualtrics. Um, the student trial account, you can only ask uh, 20 questions or 25 questions on a survey. Uh, you also cannot distribute the survey using the methods that I'm talking about here today. So I'm going to go ahead and click on distribution. So I'm going to click on uh, compose email. Here is the template for sending out the email. So the first thing you'll do, um, actually, <laughs> even though it's up here at the top, I usually like to make sure that I have everything set before I actually select who I'm going to send this to. Um, and I think I forgot to put my own name. I usually put my own name in the contact list so I can send that as a test. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, search for myself in the, the library. So here's here's some of the places where I am listed. So I'm just going to pick one of these. Um, so I'm sending it to myself because I want to test it first. So the from address. Remember earlier when I was saying uh, I'm going to show you a way where you can um, increase uh, the or decrease the likelihood that it'll end up in, in a person's spam folder is by changing this from address. So at Ohio State, we have this feature um, for instructions. Um, for, we have this at survey.osu.edu email address that we can use. Um, and I will pop a Go link in the chat box here momentarily uh, to show you how to get to this document. But it's basically on the Qualtrics blog for Ohio State. Um, and again, it, it kind of, um, it, it does help reduce the, the chance that it'll end up in uh, somebody's spam folder. So I copied that. I'm just going to add that in. So instead of no reply, I can do um, whatever I want to at the beginning of this within reason. Don't get too carried away. But since this survey is coming from me, I'm just going to put my name in here. And you can use dots if you want to. Um, and then I'm going to put the from name is going to be Debbie Lewis. But in my earlier example, you could see that um, I had uh, made those surveys for the program reviews come from Jackie Wilkins. So I had just put Jackie Wilkins here in the from at survey.osu.edu. And that's why I put that warning in the bottom paragraph that says, please don't respond or, or email that address because it's a no reply. Um, if I wanted to, if I was sending something out from, for example, the spin club uh, work group, um, I could change that to here and I, um, I could put that before the at survey.osu.edu and then I could put that as the from name. Reply to email address, it's usually best to leave your own email address in there. Um, again, if you put one of those no replies in there, um, then their message, if they just click on reply um, in their email, um, that message is not going to go anywhere or it's not going to go to the right person. Uh, send in one hour, you have several different options here. You can schedule when your survey will launch um, or you can do send now. I usually select to send now. I'm going to put a, a message, a subject message here or subject for my message. Um, so you would put a real subject line there. And then this is where I'm going to go to my messages library and find my message that I want to include here. So I click on this drop down next to load message. I go to my library. 
And then I'm going to uh, try to do a quick search because I've got a lot of stuff in here. Um, and you'll see that it's only letting me pick invitations. So I just typed the name of my, um, I knew I had the word demo in that in the email invitation, which is another good reason to name your email invitations. And then you'll see my message pops up here because I've already taken the time to create that. Now, if you don't wanna take the time to create it and put it in your messages library, then you can, of course, create it from here. Um, but it's usually a good idea to go ahead and save it in your library so that you can easily uh, start a new message um, should you want to. Um, and it's got all that information in there. Um, if I click on the send preview email, just one little word of caution, you can do that. Um, it's just not going to show you any of the piped text fields that you have included because the piped text is trying to refer back to um, whatever you had in your contact list. So if I was gonna, if I was ready to send this for real, then I would go ahead and find my contact list. And then I would say select entire list. So when I'm ready to do that, but I'm not going to do that because like I mentioned earlier, these are fake emails. <laughs> but then you would click on this send now button down here. So let me, let me go ahead and change this back to myself so I'm the only one getting it. Debbie, we do have um, a question. Okay. Um, can the address be the same as the reply email or is it best to use survey.osu.edu? So the from address is where you want to make sure you use that at survey.osu.edu because that is what is going to like be the from address um, for the participant as they're getting their email address. The reply to is if I'm, if I check my email, I go to this email, I open up the email um, uh, and I click on just the reply button, that, the, that address there is where the reply to email will go. Um, so that's why it's, it's, it's better not to have one of those no reply email addresses in here. And remember, whenever you're using this at survey.osu.edu, it is a no reply email address. Does that answer the question? Rachel, are you good? Oh, hi, Debbie. I, specifically, what I was wondering is, um, is there a reason that I couldn't just use my email in the from address? Um, yeah, because it won't, it won't let you do that. Like if I try to type my, my email address in here, I'm pretty sure that I'll get an error message. Um, okay. Let me get the full address in here, but I'm fairly certain that it won't let you. Um, once it tries to send the survey, I think we've had some people um, just this week try to use this method where they're using their own email address and it did not actually send the survey. So that's why you either leave it the way it is, which is the no reply, mm -hmm. um, or you use that, that other feature, okay? Okay, thank you. Because you wouldn't know that it's not working. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure um, uh, Chip Steyer was helping some folks out this week and they tried to use their own personal email address in this from address and it didn't work. Um, we can use our own personal email addresses when we get to email triggers and I will show you that in a, in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead, since this is only going to me, I'm gonna go ahead and click on uh, send now uh, just because I want you to see this screen right here. So once this email gets sent, um, if I had that list of 35 people or however many number of people that I have, um, you'll see uh, the number of people it was sent to in this little black box with the, the number in it. Um, and then over here, it will show me if I had any bounced emails, et cetera. So I can click on show details here and it will give me how many failed, how many, were, how many surveys were started, how many were finished. So this is just numbers. If I wanna see specifics, I can download the history here. So all I did was click on this little down arrow and uh, you can click on download history and this will show you um, a line for each person in your survey um, and like when they got the email invitation, when they started the survey and if they've completed the survey. 
Hey, Debbie. Now here is where, oh, go ahead. Um, Kay has a follow-up question. Um, she said, since we've specified a reply to email address, why do we include the do not reply in the body of the email? And then add so a the do contact email address. Yes, so the do not reply is specifically um, the at survey.osu.edu. So if I, if I come back here and uh, view this distribution, that's gonna show me what the email looked like. So that little message that says, please do not send an email to the Jacqueline.Wilkins at survey.osu.edu email address because it's a no reply email address. Um, the original version of the no reply uh, in Qualtrics says the words no reply, but that email address typically, it, it can end up in spam um, because of the mere fact that it has the words no reply in the from address. Uh, sometimes uh, people's uh, security settings on their email um, just will pop an email message that says no reply, or it's, if it's from a no reply, it'll just go to their spam, and they'll never even see the survey. So um, Debbie, another good practice, go ahead. Would, that, would it be a fair statement to say that, because uh, this is a little, I mean, it's a little hard to understand. Is that a placeholder email address, basically, for that email? You know, it's not a yeah, real... Yeah, you could, you could just... Yeah, you could describe it as that. Um, it's not a real email address in the sense that you cannot send an email to it, but it, it eliminates the, the, the necessity of having no reply, the words no reply in the email. Because like I said, some people's security settings on their emails will just automatically send that. So another good process to get into, um, if you, if you have an audience that you are afraid that it might, um, that email uh, with the invitation and the links in it might end up in their spam, um, if you have that uh, list of people, it's a good idea to send out a heads up email that has absolutely no links in it, that's from your own email address, put in the body of that email, say in two days you will be receiving an email from this email address. Please make sure you allow this email address to come into your inbox. Um, and that way you're communicating with them in, from your own email um, and letting them know that there is something on the, the way that they should be on the lookout for. Okay, Debbie, we have a follow up from Kay. And Kay, I'm gonna ask you just to go ahead and, and unmute and follow up with this question with Debbie. So earlier on, we were talking about the contact list and we were talking about if you opt not to consolidate the duplicates at that point, it would allow you to leave those 11 kids have the same family email address in there. You've got right. your box open on the screen and it says on there zero duplicate emails. At this point, mm -hmm. if those 11 kids are still in there with the Wilson3 at Gmail email address, is it going to still send 11 emails or is it going to only send one? It should still send the 11 because even though they're duplicate emails, you have them identified separately in your contact list. Um, I have tested this before in, in Qualtrics and it has worked, uh, so, but it, it will just give you a heads up here that there are that many duplicate emails. Okay, thank Good you. Good question, okay. Um, okay. Okay, Debbie, sorry. The survey email address, it, uh, the address that replies directly to Qualtrics. Debbie, can you explain? Can you unmute yourself and, and... Uh, Yes, I was just thinking people were confused as to why they had to use that, but that's the email that gives you a response, isn't it, to the survey? That... It's the email that, the like, when I get this email, it will say from Debbie.Lewis at survey.osu.edu. Yes, and that's, that's what that it'll show up. Give you a response. Yeah, that's what it'll show up in, like, like in my email. Um, and I closed my email so that I wouldn't be interrupted. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to actually go open that, but that's what that's what it'll be from. If you um, your so that's email. that's why it's in the from field. Okay. So when I'm ready to schedule um, or to send a reminder, I just come over here and click on this schedule reminder button, and you'll see right here 
the only choice I have is to send this to unfinished respondents. Up here at the top, it tells me that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click on send now. I'm, I usually type the word uh, reminder um, in the subject line. Um, I also, uh, for my invitations, I sometimes uh, put like response requested in all caps and then I'll have the subject line. Um, that's up to you, however you're, you're used to doing things. Um, again, I'm gonna go over here to load message, the drop down. I'm gonna look in my library um, for my reminders. So you'll see only my demo or, or my um, reminder demo emails will show up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. So just a quick reminder, uh, we haven't heard from you yet. Uh, and then the original email invitation is below. And then I can say, send now since, um, well, I'm the only person that's getting this, this anyway. Uh, so it again, it's going to keep track of who your um, or how many non respondents you had. So this will show me that I have one person that hasn't responded yet. So this is how you can keep track of your email invitations and your email reminders. So I wanna go back to the survey. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. So I wanna show you how you can communicate res results to your respondents. There's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, again, we're still talking about con uh, um, communication with our respondents in this, in this session here today. So under survey options is your first way. So survey options, here's um, where I was gonna show you that uh, prevent ballot box stuffing. Make sure if you have duplicate email addresses um, that you have this unchecked. If you check this, you can only respond one time using that email address. And they'll get a message on the screen that says, we're sorry, you've already responded to this survey. Thank you. <laughs> um, instead of this end of survey message, which this is another type of message you can create is an end of survey message. Um, but I want to communicate my results uh, to my respondents. So I'm gonna do the show response summary. And what this is gonna do is when, I, um, when I, I, as a respondent, if I'm taking this survey, when I get to the last page and I have clicked the next button to submit my responses, it's gonna show me a page. It's gonna allow me to download a PDF of those results. Um, so the for each member, for example, can download uh, um, results of, of whatever, however they responded. And that's really nice because it will include every question that was on your survey, whether it was just a display question, a text display question, or whether it was a question they actually had to respond to. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save there. Whenever you make changes to a live survey that has already been launched, because you see we, we did the distributions first, I just wanna give you a reminder. You always have to come in here and click on this publish and then click on publish again, because those changes will not be reflected um, to the people that are taking your survey until you have done that. And then that yellow banner will disappear. So the other way that you can send out um, uh, a person's responses to them um, is using an email trigger. So this is under your tools. Instead of survey options, we're gonna go to tools this time. Hover over triggers and click on email triggers. So this one already has, um, because I used a template from the OSU Extension Library in Qualtrics, it already has um, the ability to send, it already, I already set up a, a trigger email in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this one. If I wanted to create a new one, I would just click here to add another trigger. Um, for example, you could set up a trigger email so that the survey sends you an email every time a person responds to the survey. Um, for example, that's how I have the uh, online Triple T request set up right now. Um, so I just wanna show you a few things in here. So this is going to send an email on survey completion. Now this particular one, since I already had it set up, um, but I have copied this uh, survey into my own account and created my own survey with it, um, I'm gonna go ahead and double check to make sure that this is actually going to the two. Um, so this, this survey has a field where we've asked for the respondent's um, email address. So 
um, that's what I want the two email address to go because I want them to receive their own email, um, an email that says, here's how you responded. So I'm going to click on this little, our, our little friend, the pipe text with the A with the curly brackets. I'm going to go to survey question. And then this one had email address separate from um, like the contact information. If you have email address embedded somewhere in one of your questions, just wherever you have that email address response, that's what you're going to click on. So I hover over that. I don't want them to, I don't want it to go to the question text because that's not going to go anywhere. I want it to actually send to the email address that they put into the question. So I'm going to go ahead and um, copy everything or I'm going to cut this actually because I don't want it to be in my uh, my actual email. So everything from the dollar sign to the last curly bracket, I'm using my keyboard shortcut control X and I'm going to come up here and do control V um, and then this will go to that person whatever email address they typed in. The from name I'm going to do myself, put my own name in here for the reply to email, I don't want them to reply to this trigger. That's, that's, I, don't, I don't know where that's going. So I want, if they have a question, I want it to come to me. And then I can leave this, the, the subject line here. You'll see that this is, I, I set it up to be a confirmation email. So a couple other things that are included in this particular one. Um, I did the first name here. Uh, so it's gonna show up as hello first name. Um, I did it the same way. Click on this survey question. In this case, I want it to go to the first name, and this was in question number two. Click on first name. This one also has the option um, that it shows what they selected. Um, so this is a, a quicker way or a, a quick way, a very short email um, where they can see, okay, I selected session three. Uh, so I got this one in there using the same feature. Click on this pipe text. It's a little bit different because I'm still doing survey question, but this time I'm going to come down here to say, select the quality assurance session you want to attend. And then I'm going to say selected choice or selected choices. That way it will be whatever they selected um, that will display. So session three, uh, May 5th at whatever time. And I'm going to just change that text to red because it'll call it out and make it more visible. And then I'm going to make sure I put my signature block here. If I want to get rid of this yellow highlight, um, this was in a template. So I'm just going to, uh, this with the, the black with the white font, um, A, is the font, is the, uh, the background color. So I'm going to select automatic and that gets rid of that. Now, Here's where you can do that longer report. So I can do include response report. And then I'm going to make sure I say show the full question text. If you don't select show full question text, it's just going to give you an abbreviated version of that um, question text, which might not make much sense to the respondent. So the only difference here between um, what I showed you earlier using the show a full report um, using the survey options and this one is the show full report is going to show all of the questions, even the text display only questions, um, whereas this one is only going to show the questions that they responded to. So the text of the questions they responded to, all of the other ones will be gone. So they won't see this, for example, they won't see this first question pop up or, or that won't be on that final report. So um, I see uh, uh, Lisa has some good advice in here. Um, you can redirect them to your blog and let me show you where, where uh, you can do that as well. That's also under survey options. When you're ending the survey, so survey termination, you can put in, um, you can send them to a specific URL so this option here where it says redirect, re, redirect to full URL. Um, but for this example, Lisa, we were trying to um, have the opportunity so that the person can download their, their responses. That's why I did the show response summary here. Because these are radio buttons, I can only select one of these options. But this is another way if you don't need to show them that what their responses were, you can, like Lisa said, just redirect them to um, a URL. 
Okay, so that was a lot of information in an hour. Um, <laughs> uh, if do we have any other questions? I think that's everything that I said I was going to get to, though. Pete, did I forget anything? I don't think so, Debbie. I'm just so happy that we talked about email triggers. Those are very, it's a very useful tool. Yes, are you going to put that website where we get the survey.osu.edu? Thanks for the reminder. Let me pop that in the chat box right now. Once I find my meeting again, <laughs> I've lost you guys. Oh, there you are. So uh, while Debbie's doing that, I'm just curious. I know we've got some expert users here today. Uh, have people been using email triggers in their work? Okay, Lisa, anybody? Just curious. I'm just curious. Uh, I just. I've been using the action button, which will a lot more time. What was that, Jackie? Was that Jackie? Yeah, I, I just found out about them two weeks ago, so oh, I'm okay. excited about them. <laughs> I've been using the action button, which takes a lot of thought. Okay, then you're ahead of me on because I haven't used actions. Yeah, I've been using the email triggers. But on a lot of the help stuff that I was reading, it said that an email action might be better, but I have yet to take the time to figure out how those work because like, like Jackie was saying, it seemed like they take a lot of effort and an email trigger, I've used those often enough that they're, they're a little more intuitive for me and I just haven't invested the time in the other yet. Yeah, me too, Kay. Yeah, they're, they're fast and easy. <laughs> I've seen the actions, but I, I'm like, I'm like UT. I haven't, <laughs> and Kay, I haven't taken the time to figure them out because I found something that works for me. So that's what I, I share with other people. So. Kaylee says she's used you actions. Or no, Kaylee, you've used email triggers. Okay. So that was actually one of my questions was what's the difference between an email trigger and an email action since I've never taking the time to figure that out yet. Jackie, since you've used them. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> can you help us out there? It, it, they seem to be the same. Just the email triggers are 10,000 times easier. <laughs> so um, Teresa Johnson has a uh, question in the chat box. Um, so when I was showing the email triggers, um, you could set up a separate email trigger for each of those. Uh, for example, if you had like nine quality assurance sessions set up and you had a different Zoom link for each of those dates, um, you could set up a specific um, uh, email trigger for each one of those. So say somebody re replied and they want to attend session one, you would just um, up in the email trigger um, options, there's a place where you can specify um, re you can filter out uh, ways to um, add specific. So if they responded to session one, they're going to get this email that says, thank you for signing up. Here's your Zoom link. This is what you're going to need to get into that meeting. So you can specify it for each of those different respondents. Um, the way I was showing was just an easy thing that says, you know, you're, here's what you signed up for and you'll be receiving um, that email or the, the link to the Zoom room um, at a, you know, at a later date. So, Teresa, that would be an even better way that you wouldn't have to go in and send those uh, <laughs> Zoom links through your own email. Anybody else have any tips or tricks they want to share? I had another question about the email triggers. Is there a way to set go it ahead. up? send at a specific date or time instead of the send in 28 days, 14 days, eight hours. So is our quality assurance deadline was, I don't know whenever the deadline was for registration, but we always wanted to send a reminder email the day before that has that link in it for that specific mm -hmm. Zoom. But when you set up the trigger, you couldn't really set it up ahead of time because depending on when they completed the survey, is that how they ju they judge when it's going to send? Is it going to send 28 days from the time I set it up or 28 days from the time that they complete the survey? You know, if I want it to go out Thursday for Friday's session, how do I tell it that? 
Yeah, so once I have gotten people to respond to my survey, I typically don't, I, I use my own, like I download the data from, uh, from Qualtrics and then I use um, Excel to keep track of who's going to um, get what reminder. Um, and then I have it in my own, like, and I have it in an Outlook. So I can keep track of, you know, who I have sent the Zoom link to um, instead of having to go back through and uh, go back through Qualtrics because I'm not sure, like, I can see specifically, hey, I sent you the Zoom link. You should have it. This is the date and time that it got sent. But um, you should be able to click on add condition here, and I haven't actually tried this yet. So, um, yeah, this is not giving me a specific date, but this is where you could do the, um, the uh, thing that Teresa Johnson was uh, saying earlier in the chat box. Um, so if I wanted everybody that uh, signed up for session one, I could um, set this up. Uh, with the specific Zoom link in the embedded in the email itself um, by doing this question here, select question, um, the session you want to attend, and then everybody that responded with session one, um, they're going to get uh, this email uh, trigger that has this specific Zoom link. So uh, K in this case, it would be sending them out right away as soon as they signed up. Um, and like I said, if you want to send a reminder that they need to come to that session and this is the one they signed up for, that's when I take it into my own hands and say, okay, Qualtrics, um, you're done <laughs> um, helping me communicate with my people. And I just uh, send the email out through um, using my own uh, Outlook account. Yeah, that's how we had done ours, just like that trigger box that you just went into. But I would go in on Monday morning, I would create the one to send for Tuesday's link. And the one on Tuesday, I would go in and create the one to send Wednesday's link because I couldn't figure out how to on Monday morning set it up to send this one on Monday and this one on Tuesday and this one on Wednesday and this one on Thursday, mm -hmm. depending on which session they had replied to. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's the, the only workaround I could think of, Kay, exactly what you've talked about. And it looks like that, I, it seems to me like Qualtrics should have what I always call the Southwest calendar where you could go in and pick the specific day and specific time, but. Yeah, I know you can do that with the reminder emails, um, but I've also found, um, it's been a couple of years since I did the whole schedule or reminder, um, but I, I found that it was, to unfinished respondents at the time I had set up the reminder. Even if it, was, if it was scheduled for seven days out, it was sending to the people who hadn't responded um, at the time I set up that email reminder. So it can get a little bit confusing. Um, but like I said, it's, it's been a while since they use that schedule reminder. So I typically just go in whenever I'm ready to send out a uh, reminder email and I'll just set it up. Any other questions? 